If you want me to continue with my work, it is crucial to support the channel via Patreon. Moreover, make sure to subscribe to Bobby's Perspective on Rumble. All the links are in the description box below. May Allah bless you all. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, very fascinating video today. We're going to react to the shocking truth about sex chromosomes. So with this title, you're probably wondering why I react to such a video in the first place. The only reason why I do is because it is on the channel Rational Believer. As we all know, Rational Believer is a huge Islamic channel. And therefore, today we're going to intertwine Islam and science. Before we start the video, as always, guys, if you enjoy the content, leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. The thinking that mothers are responsible for determining the gender of a child was prevalent up until 20th century. And it is mostly because in those societies people wanted to have boys instead of girls, because they used to think that women are inferior to men, and having daughters would lower their status in society. This negative view was so common among people that until the 20th century even some of the priests and Christian churches considered women as soulless creatures. And in pre-Islamic era amongst the Arabs, people used to persecute the mothers because of giving birth to a daughter and bury their daughters alive. And some of them kept the daughters with sadness and accepting the shame in society. Yes, this was absolutely shocking to me when I first found out about it. Pre-Islamic Arabia. In pre-Islamic Arabia, those pagans actually buried their firstborn daughters. And Islam abolished that. And this is something that the haters of Islam do not mention, of course. They just tell you about Islam and the bad, bad warfare. They were fighting those poor pagans, not mentioning what those pagans did in the first place. Of course, first and foremost, they deified all kinds of creatures besides God. And that is what the first tenet of Islam stands against. Have no partners attributed to God, worship one God alone. The reason being for that is, once you start worshipping demons, aside from God, you fall into all kinds of other degenerate practices, such as, for example, burying your firstborn daughter. And this is what Prophet Muhammad wasallam, amongst other things, came to fight against. That's what people have to understand. The pagans were not just, ooh, benign, compassionate people. They were just minding their own business. And then evil Muhammad came and was fighting them for no reason whatsoever. But when Islam came, it cleaned the society from such superstitious beliefs and yes. said justice with legal rights for women. Absolutely. But nowadays it's so oppressive. Unfortunately, due to the lack of knowledge, Islam. even now there are people in some regions of the world which blame the mother of a newborn for determining the gender of the baby. But the truth is that science tells us something else. Science tells us that when the sperm and egg are unite, the genetic material of each are combined, providing exactly. the zygote all the information necessary for transforming the single cell into a complex network of cells known as the human body. Yes, and that is important to understand as well because you have both extremes. At first, in the days of superstition, people really thought that the mother is responsible solely for what the gender will be. She is determining the gender. But then later on, even in recent times, most people started assuming through science that the semen is responsible for the sex. You have male swimmers and female swimmers. And therefore, they started attributing the sex only to the father, only to the male. So at both extremes, at first people thought it's the woman, then they thought it is the man. But now we come to the conclusion that both parties equally contribute to the gender. Human cells contain 23 pairs of chromosomes, which is a total of 46 chromosomes. Each pair contains two chromosomes, one coming from each parent, which means the children inherit half of their chromosomes from their mother and half from their father. Which is so fascinating. So what are the chromosomes? It's literally a copy of chromosomes the Chromosomes are thread-like structures made of protein and a single molecule of DNA that serve to carry the genomic information from cell to cell and they reside in the nucleus of the cell. From among those 23 pairs of chromosomes, one pair is called sex chromosomes. 
At conception, each embryo gets an X chromosome from its mother and either an X or a Y chromosome from its father. So either it takes an X chromosome from the mother and X from the father which results in female gender or it takes an X chromosome from the mother and a Y chromosome from the father which That's results so in male gender. In either way, it's the father who determined the gender of the embryo and not the mother. As I mentioned previously, not quite. Now we have new evidence suggesting that both parties play equal roles. Yes, it is of course true the Y chromosome can only come from the male and therefore the sperm is the determining factor which sperm will enter the egg. However, as I said, there is evidence suggesting that the egg itself plays a role in which sperm it chooses because there are many sperms simultaneously trying to penetrate the egg and therefore there is an additional factor of which sperm the egg will choose, so to speak, to penetrate. But of course, I'm not a scientist. That's all I heard. This fact has been unraveled in 20th century through advances in the science of embryology. However, Quran has shed light on this fact 14 centuries ago, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <laughs> In the mentioning verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that it's a sperm which is responsible for the gender of the embryo. Or in other words, I'm obviously not an Islamic or Quranic scholar. However, when I hear this passage, for me, it simply means that this is how life starts. It does not imply, therefore, that the sperm is solely responsible for it. Please let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala determines the gender of the embryo to father. To father. I don't really read this in the passage, but yes, obviously, think for as a I said, moment. you do need the Y chromosome. Is it possible for a man 14 centuries ago to talk about such an amazing fact which has been discovered recently? The answer is for sure no, and it points to the fact that these words can only be divine words which explains the details of creation. All right, guys, this is it for today's video. As I said throughout it, I heard about new evidence suggesting that both genders play equal parts in this equation. The egg has to choose the sperm as well. But be that as it may, all of those scientific miracles within the Quran are really not a huge determining factor for me personally. I just became a father again, now to a newborn daughter. Alhamdulillah, but what does that mean? I am still the same man, my wife is still the same woman, our first first child was a boy, our second child is a girl. My sperm is the determining factor, however. But again, what does that mean? I produce apparently male and female sperms, however at the first time it was a male, now it is a female. Who is the determining factor here? It is of course Allah, it is God that chooses. For me that is miraculous enough, I don't have to go into the detail and I'll think about yeah, well, there are male and female sperms, and it's the father that is responsible, it's the mother that is responsible, both of them are responsible. I really do not care, because ultimately, as believers, we know that the sex is determined by God alone. All right, guys, and this is it for today's short video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to further support the channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys, and as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.